What's left to do until Starship and Super Heavy are finally ready to take to the skies for the first time ever and perform that long-awaited first orbital flight? Well, there are certainly a number of tasks left to do, such as numerous runs of testing on both vehicles, including spin prime tests, static fire tests. There is also the question mark Booster 7, which is still undergoing repairs within the Mega Bay. There are also some final touches to the launch site remaining. There is the FAA, the launch license. It's quite a few things. So for this video, we are going to go over hopefully most of these milestones that still need to be completed and talk a little bit about each one of them. I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. We'll begin with the two most obvious items on the list which are the vehicles themselves. Booster 7 had already completed many of its tests and everything was going according to plan until that fateful day when during a spin prime test an unexpected explosion underneath Booster 7 happened causing some damage to both the booster and the launch mount and so Booster 7 was taken back to the production site for repairs thus delaying its testing campaign for several weeks. It has already been some time since the incident and it's unclear how much longer it's going to take for B7 to get back onto the launch mount or even if it is going to make it out of the mega bay in one piece because its younger sibling B8 is already standing tall next to it and you know that got me thinking hmm I guess it wouldn't be too surprising if SpaceX decides to move on to B8 and retire B7 although we'll see it's neither easy nor cheap to put together a booster of that size, so not an easy decision for SpaceX. Anyway, whichever booster is selected to lift Ship 24 into space will need to complete its respective rounds of testing, including spin prime tests and static fire tests on all 33 engines, while doing its best to avoid unexpected issues especially those involving potentially explosive events. I don't know why, but that incident reminds me of another incident in Oregon back in 1970, where they tried to blow up a dead whale that was lying on the beach with half a ton of dynamite. <laughs> Unexpected to them, the premise didn't go as planned and some people had to explain to the insurance companies what had happened to their cars. For the blast blasted blubber beyond all believable bounds. Anyway, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that uh, sometimes unexpected things happen. Although in this specific case, an argument could be made as to how predictable this incident was. But yeah, uh, let's hope that the upcoming booster tests proceed without any further unforeseen occurrences. Next, we have Ship 24, which has had a more successful testing campaign so far, and currently we are waiting on the final static fire tests to wrap up the campaign. There have been numerous rounds of spin prime tests, and honestly, I think we have had enough of those. I want to see some more action. A big question with Ship 24 is how well the thermal protection tiles are going to hold up. We saw many of them constantly falling to the ground during static fire tests on Ship 20, so it remains to be seen how much better the tiles on Ship 24 are able to hold on to it and withstand the vibrations. The lifting points will also need to be covered with tiles, but all in all, Ship 24 is very close to finishing its testing campaign and being ready for orbit. Once both vehicle halves have completed their respective campaigns, a wet dress rehearsal will have to be conducted, and once that has successfully been done, we may then look forward to a launch date. At the launch site itself, there are still a number of tasks left. The orbital launch mount is receiving its final touches and repairs after the damage suffered from the explosion. There is also some piping work left to do at the orbital tank farm, plus any remaining delivery of cryogenic liquids. A lot of effort is being dedicated to the catching arms lately. According to CSI Starbase, there is a pretty major operation coming up for the chopsticks, which hopefully won't take that long but I'm sure Zach will tell us more about it in one of his upcoming videos, which by the way are incredibly well put together and full of details, just a joy to watch, so I recommend you go check out his channel if you haven't already. 
So how long is it going to take SpaceX to complete the work still required for an orbital launch? Almost impossible to tell, but a launch before September seems unlikelier with every passing day. I would speculate that whenever you see them removing the last scaffolding structures, that will be a pretty good sign that their job there is almost done, at least for the time being, so keep an eye out for that. Finally, there is still the issue with the FAA and the launch license. There are a series of measures SpaceX has to take to both mitigate and compensate for the environmental impact of the Starship program. SpaceX will also have to provide a more advanced notice of launches to reduce the time that a public highway passing through the Starbase facility is closed during launch operations, and these road closures will not be permitted on 18 identified holidays, with weekend restrictions only being allowed 5 weekends per year. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle will be the still pending launch license that the FAA needs to issue. If you want to keep track of all the milestones still left to complete, you can check out this amazing launch readiness list, patiently put together by Grandpa Joe on Twitter. I will leave the link in the description box down below. Once all these steps and requirements have finally been completed, SpaceX's Starship will finally be go for launch. It's going to be an event to watch regardless of what happens or how well it goes. We might even see a booster catch attempt if it manages to put Starship in its path to orbit. And that alone, the anticipation of that behemoth of a rocket coming in hot from space and then performing a landing burn to hopefully hover safely between the catching arms, that thought is enough to keep me awake at night. Anyway, this is what's left, more or less, for Starship and Super Heavy to perform their first orbital flight. As for the launch date, I would say sometime in September. Hopefully I'm wrong in a good sense that it happens before that, but uh, yeah, uh, difficult. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for being here and watching until the end. Have a nice day wherever you are on this blue marble, lost in an eternal and unfathomable cosmos, and I will see you all soon again. Take care, bye bye.